Hey everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to start a new series today, and it's called Living Out the Mind of Christ. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at Philippians 2 and see how we can live out the mind of Christ and what exactly the mind of Christ is. Um, there is an old kind of slogan that was popular when I was in the youth um, back in the early 90s. It's called WWJD, What Would Jesus Do? And the idea, if you're not familiar with it, is anytime you're faced with a decision that you have to make or whether you should do something or you should not do something, you would ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And therefore, you're trying to imply or trying to uh, apply uh, the mind of Christ. What would Jesus do in those situations? And that is what I want to look at. And we can see clearly exactly what the mind of Christ looks like looking at Philippians 2. Now, there are some misconceptions about the mind of Christ that I want to go over, first of all. The first one is only the elite, spiritual elite, can have the mind of Christ. And that is so not true. Anybody and everybody can have the mind of Christ if they choose to and if they're willing to. The second misconception is that the mind of Christ is just too hard to define and it's just impossible. Well, again, the whole purpose of what I want to do is go over Philippians 2, and we can see clearly Paul teaches us exactly what the mind of Christ is. So let's look at Philippians 2 and see what it says about living out the mind of Christ. In Philippians 2, starting with verse 2, it says, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, being of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now, what I want to do is really look at verse 5 before we can go any further. By looking at verse 5, then we can see exactly what the mind of Christ is. Verse 5 says, let this mind be in you. Now notice that this is a noun. Let this mind, this thing, be in you. Let this noun be in you. But Paul wrote this word to mean attitude or thinking. So we can rephrase this by saying, let this attitude be in you. Or let this kind of thinking be in you. In the original Greek language, Paul also used a verb for this word. He used it in a verb form instead of a noun form. So living out the mind of Christ is not something that is known or understood. It is something that is acted upon or lived out. It is demonstrated. Now, living out the mind of Christ will change your thinking. Now, when Paul used this in the original form in verse 5, when he said, let this mind be in you, He's actually implying that we need to change our thinking, as in Romans 12, 2, another verse that he wrote. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you have to change your mindset. You have to change your attitude to be able to live out the way Christ would like you to have. Therefore, if you want to practice the living out the Christ mindset, you have to live out and practice what the Bible requires. That means you need to practice repentance, confession. It also means that you need to practice really reading and meditating on God's Word on a daily basis. Now, the mind of Christ is a threefold attitude. You cannot adapt one attitude and leave out the others and still have the mind of Christ. It's just not possible. So in order to have the Christ mindset, you have to have the threefold attitude. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in the next couple of weeks, are those three attitudes that make up the Christ mindset. So tonight what I want to do is focus on the very first attitude. The first attitude is unity. And you find unity in the second verse. So let's reread the second verse. It says, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. So there's three words that are in this verse that point to unity. So let's do a word study real quick. The first word is like. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded. The second word is same. 
having the same love. Third is one, being of one accord, having one mindset. Okay, so in unity, there is like, same, and one. If you want to have the mind of Christ, you have to implement these three words. You have to be like-minded with other Christians. You have to love each and every one the same. And we have to be focused as one for the same purpose. Now, the first word, like-minded, actually has three actions. Okay, so it's same love, one accord, and being of one mind. Let's look at same love. Same love, this is another way of saying that you have a deep commitment to love one another, no matter the personality or physical differences. In fact, the word that Paul uses for love means total commitment. This means that loving people for who they are and loving them on the days that even when it's difficult to do so, that is what it means to have the same kind of love, loving people even when they don't love you back. The second action is being of one accord. Now, when Paul originally wrote this, he wrote it with the, in the context of today's language, meaning like married couples, one accord. Um, that is the most modern day example I can give. So uh, to put this in application, it would be when my wife, when she asked me what I want to eat, she will say, do you want Zaxby's or do you want Chick-fil-A? Notice how she doesn't ask, what meal do you want from Zaxby's? What meal do you want from Chick-fil-A? She just says, do you want Zaxby's, Chick-fil-A? What do you want to eat? What that means is she knows exactly what I would get at Chick-fil-A. She knows exactly what I would get from Zaxby's or any other place because she knows what exactly what I want to eat. She just knows me that way. Sometimes she knows just by looking at me exactly uh, how I'm feeling. I don't have to tell her. Just as soon as I walk in the door, she can sense the mood that I'm in and just know exactly how I'm feeling. We also have a way of communicating non-verbally. Uh, we can communicate through body language. She know, And we can communicate this way because we know each other of one accord. Um, and we, we don't have to use words to talk sometimes because we know each other intimately and she knows exactly how I'm feeling or, or whatever. Living out the mind of Christ means that we need to get to know people on a personal basis. We need to get to know them on an intimate level. We'll be able, you should be able to sense people's moods if you live out the mind of Christ. You'll be able to sense out people's moods and how they're feeling. But more so, you'll be able to sense when they're having a great day and you can rejoice with them. Or you can sense that they're having a bad day and that you can be there for them and that you will know how to minister to them on that bad day. Now, the last action of being like-minded is being of one mind. Now, what this means is we should all be working to, for the same purpose. So let me ask you, what drives you? What gives you the sense of waking up and doing things during the day? What is the ultimate thing that you want to accomplish in life? Hopefully, it's that you can glorify God. That is the ultimate thing that we should all be trying to do is to glorify God. That is the reason why we wake up. That is the reason why we live. That is the purpose of each and every day to glorify God. Living out the mind of Christ means that we're all focused on the same purpose to glorify God. What that means is the person who sits in the very back of the pew, or the very back of the church is just as important as the person who's singing on stage. There are no favorites. There are everyone's equal in this because we're all focused on the same purpose to glorify God. First Corinthians 15, 58 says this. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So let me encourage you to constantly continue your work in the Lord. Constantly try to minister to people. Constantly try to be there for people and love one another. Your efforts will not be in vain. What that means is God is always watching and he's always going to uh, notice and take notice of what you're doing. He will bless you for those efforts in the end. Keep striving. It will pay off. He will bless you for it. So how do you put this verse into practice? As you encounter people each and every day, I want to challenge you to 
Find out things about them. Ask them how their day is going. Ask them what kind of hobbies they like. How are they doing? Ask them if there's anything that's bothering them. And when, when there is something, let them know that you are going to be there for them. And lastly, remember, we should all be going for the same purpose, to glorify God. So in, in all of your efforts that you're doing each and every day, glorify God. Thank you for watching, and I want to encourage you to have that Christ-like mindset. And just read over these verses again, Philippians 2, 2 through 5, and meditate on them. How can you apply this verse this week? I love you and God bless you.